good. It's your man, Chris Mitchell, homesick Buckeye. And I am here with my girl, my ride or die, my keto sister, Nurse Kim. Nurse Kim is in the building, but I think you can do it. We're going to bring you in the right way. We're going to bring you in the right way, sis. <laughs> But yes, man, we're going to let some folks get in the room, let some folks uh, congregate and gather. As always, like, share. Uh, subscribe. Folks up over over here. On the, yeah, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Mm -hmm. Come on over here. I don't, think I've ever, I don't think I've ever told anybody to subscribe before, Russ. Right to your channel? Yeah, they just never. Yeah, they just know automatically. They're just like, hey, I better, let me subscribe. This is Nurse Kim. I got to have her. I got to have her. Where's the subscribe button? <laughs> I mean, I figure either they like me or they don't. If they don't, like, what's me saying, oh, hey, subscribe? What's that going to do? Who doesn't, who doesn't like you? Who doesn't like you? Well, you know, people oh, you'd don't. Be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, not everybody, not anybody important. I can say that. I can say that. <laughs> Yes, but there are haters everywhere. They are everywhere. Yes, folks coming in. Hey, Nancy, what's happening, Nancy? Good to see you. Paul, hello, hello. Give people a few minutes to come on in. Hit the notification bell, all that stuff. If you don't know, now you know, man, and it is a Tuesday. Love hanging out with the family, chopping it up with the family, just seeing what's going on with everybody, letting everybody know what I'm doing and seeing what everybody else is doing. It's a lot of fun. How has your week been, Nurse Kim, since the last show? It's It's been pretty good, actually. Um, yeah. I had a pretty uh, good week at work, and that's always a plus. And uh, I don't have to go back till Saturday, so, you know. I'm yeah, now what it. is your def what is your definition of a good week at work? Like, uh, is it like nobody died? Is it like I mean, uh, no, some, somebody died. I mean, <laughs> you what? No, somebody died, but um, yeah, I oh. mean that wasn't the good part. Obviously, people die. Yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah, yeah, bad, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But uh, no, uh, it wasn't my personal patient. Um, but people yeah. do die sometimes, so. Um, yeah, it's just, um, with me and my patients, we're just vibing, we're, we're talking right. about stuff, we're, we're making friends, you know, we're, yeah. um, they're not mean to me and I'm not mean to them. That's my <laughs> definition of a good week. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody would uh, like their nurse not to be mean to them. I think, you know, it's like, it's like my nurse hit me with a bedpan. No, <laughs> yeah. I think it's more often the patients are me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, the hospitals, it's, nobody really wants to be there. You know, you just end up there, kind of like Denny's. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, we have to overlook a lot, and that's okay. That's part of the job. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't mind. I don't take it too personally. But yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah, my week has been, uh, you know, a little, little nutty, a uh, little bit. You know, I've got both my biological dad and my adopted dad are both um, having some health problems. So uh, they've both been in and out of the hospitals, and it's been a little rough. They're both in their 80s, and, uh, you know, it's just kind of part of it. Father Time is yeah, yeah. Father Time is undefeated. I um I talked about it a little bit last stream. I um adopted dad was down here visiting and fell and he was in the hospital. Then he was in a rehab center and um he uh fell twice in there and just uh fractured hip and so he's been in the hospital, yeah. Now he's in a rehab center again and so we're just trying to, you know, nurse him back to health and Keep him comfortable in that. He's going to be here uh, in Jacksonville for at least another two weeks, maybe four. So, and then, you know, we'll just try to play it by ear, get him back home. And yeah, you know, I go. So much of this is just, you know, day to day and week to week, you know. So, you know, but uh, he's got a lot of people rooting for him, a lot of people praying for him. And uh, so, you know, like I said, we'll, you know, keep doing what we do. That's about it. I'm sorry you're going through a rough time, Russ, but, you know, sometimes hey. we need things like this to get our mind off of it. 
There's no place I'd rather be than hanging out with you and, and the family here. Just talking, just, uh, laughing, smiling, having a good time. You know, I'm all about that. I'm all yeah. about laughing, smiling and, you know, keep going. You know, there's always things in life that are going to get you down. There's always things in life that may discourage you or disappoint you. Hey, you got to get up, dust yourself off and keep rocking. That's keep right. Doing steadily improving. So uh, that's what we're doing. Health wise, I'm good. You know, no scurvy. Still trying to get that heart attack. Shout out to Quackity Quack Man. My man, uh, Slick Rick, is out there somewhere uh, uh, chasing a duck or an iguana, I'm sure. <laughs> probably lurking in them. He's probably can see him right now in his duck suit, uh, you know, in camouflage somewhere, and, you know, looking for a duck to spear. Shout out to him. <laughs> but, um, you know, he, he, he coined the phrase, the first guy I've heard to talk about heart attack diet. So, yeah, we're on that heart attack diet. We're trying our best to go out with the big one, man. Mm -hmm. Eat bacon and oh. frying things in bacon grease, buddy. We're trying to get that heart attack diet. Hey, Garth. <laughs> Garth oh, and we do boy. have oh, Rick. Here yeah. he is. <laughs> hey, speak, out, speak of the duck, and here he is. Yes, <laughs> I told you. He's lurking around there somewhere, man. I guarantee you. He's probably just took off his duck suit. For me, his duck camouflage, his feather suit <laughs> in the grass. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we can put a big one, baby. Absolutely. Yeah. Better believe it. One so, treat as we speak, I'm sure. Yes, that is. That's, that's, is that that's what you do, Rick? Yeah. As always, uh, you can come on in and join us. We got a link in the chat if you want to pop on and say, hey, crack a joke. You got something to talk about? Come on in with us, hang out. If not, we'll keep uh, doing what we do here. Yeah, Man, can I this get week, a link in the chat. Yeah, I put one in there, but we'll put uh, another one in there if we need to. Okay. And, uh, as, yeah, as far as uh, as far as diet is concerned, family, I got to uh, let you know I've been all over this keto road. Man, if you look, if you see me swerving on that keto highway, <laughs> <laughs> don't judge me. Don't ju <laughs> listen. I clipped the guardrail. Okay, <laughs> mm -hmm. I have been all over the keto road over these last couple of weeks. My family's been here for a couple of weeks. Uh, they're all vegetarians, mm -hmm. uh, and so you know, just snacking. Like I yeah. said, I didn't. I didn't wreck. Okay, I didn't crash the keto mobile. It did not crash. <laughs> okay? You didn't total it. It's it's yes. still drivable, hey, right? <laughs> hey, listen, you know, hey, no, no, I, I just clipped the guardrail. Hey, listen, you know, like when you're on the road and you get all up and you hear that, uh, yeah, you know, I guess, yeah, I've done that. I, <laughs> I have done that. That is for sure. But uh, yeah, I have not wrecked the keto mobile. I've just, you know, been snacking. You know, little <laughs> things, you know, some potato chips and nuts, yeah. you know, a few, vet, you know, some vegetables, some beans, you know, just little stuff. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. So not, not terrible. My chaffle game, I've been tightening up my chaffle game. Oh. Although it's not really much, uh, not, it's not very chaffle. Not very chaffly? Chaffles aren't chaffly? No. Yeah, the, the CH indicates there's some cheese in there, and it's a little bit. I have been experimenting, uh, experimenting more with coconut flour a little bit, and I'd be curious to know if any of you guys. I mean, I know uh, sometimes there's a a carnivore contingent, but you know we're big tent here, so everybody's welcome. But uh, if any of you have uh, done anything with coconut flour, used it, you know, uh, dabbled in it, use it here and there. Uh, so I've been doing that and I got a kind of a cool mix, um, you know, with my less cheese, a little bit of, of, um, of, um, of coconut flour that I've been dabbling in. It's, 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 it's pretty low carb. It fits in with my macros and I've been making some breakfast sandwiches in the morning with it. Um, and stuff like that. I, and I like it. It's a nice compliment. I'm going to make some uh, salmon salad probably here uh, this week or next week. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 
I can use that with that. Um, I'm probably make some burger patties before too long. I can kind of do a little bit with that. I, I don't want it to be eggy and it's not eggy. I want it to be kind of a blend between cheesy and bready. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of what I'm doing. And there's a bunch of different recipes out there, but I'm an odd bird. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, my tastes are a little different, so I don't want it too cheesy and I don't want it too bready. I want a nice blend. And I think I found it. Have you done any of that? Have you ever made chaffles or any kind of uh Yeah, I make I actually make a little uh carnivore chaffle pizza as a little treat here and there. Um yeah. I got the recipe from Courtney Luna and mm-hmm. um a woman who gets much hate on the internet. Oh my goodness. About what? If, if you're if you're faint of heart, don't go to her comment section. <laughs> I'm not it's familiar. Bad. People oh people Instagram, they're vicious. I, I didn't know they were so mean over there. Well, is it a personal attack or just like they don't like her message? Yeah, yeah. A oh little bit of both. It's yeah, personal attacks it. because they don't like her message, basically. So her so, message is uh carnivore, you know, mostly carnivore, keto, but yeah, mostly carnivore, and they don't like it. Oh, because I mean, what? She, you know, she's got, she has way more positive than she has negative, but the negative is just so like, I wrote her a little note and I'm like, girl, thank you so much for doing what you do and taking what you take over here because so I really appreciate the recipes. So it's people, what are people, oh, that's not carnivore, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Oh, not just that. Like, you know, these are probably vegans or vegetarians or I don't know. Oh, 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 just, oh, um, oh that kind of hate. Yeah, just awful. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I thought you were talking about people who are trying to out out keto each other. No, but, but these are people who are not who are not. Yeah, keto these people. are these are kind of obviously not keto people. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, you know, there's always that. You know, <laughs> I mean, I get little bits of that. Um, you know, I've got some family that are just hardcore. I mean, and I get it, man. Listen, it it is really hard to unlearn everything you've ever learned. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just hard to do. It's hard to look at health and nutrition and all the things we've been taught. I mean, I'm 50 plus years old. I mean, I've been taught since I was a little, little kid, how much I need fruit and vegetables, Yeah, you know, and grains. And to tell somebody, no, you really don't. I mean, I don't know how many times it's like, people are like, what are you talking about? I don't need fruit. <laughs> well, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, no. And and it does sound crazy, but you don't have to be, you don't have to treat people like that yeah. regardless. I yeah, mean, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. care what other people eat. You know, I'm a grown adult and yeah. it doesn't yeah. hurt me that bad if you eat what you eat <laughs> and I eat what I eat, you know. Yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine about that earlier today. And, you know, I was saying, you know, I don't care what you eat. I'm not the food police, although I do consider myself part of the Food Information Bureau. Uh, you know, so the FIB, um, but the biggest problem that I have, the thing that I hate the most is that people are told that thing, they need things and they're good for you. You know, that's the part that is just so insidious to me. Like if I have a bowl of ice cream, Hey, Daryl, what's happening, brother? Good to see you, man. If I have a bowl of ice cream, right. I don't have any thought about it being good for me. I don't have any thought about I need this to live or, you know, any of that. I don't, I know it just tastes good and I like it and I want to eat it. Simple as that. Um, I mean, it's a free country. That's a good thing. Absolutely. But the problem is if I sit a bowl of oatmeal in front of you, you got a group of people who are telling you, you need that, that it's heart healthy. And that, you know, if you don't have enough of this, you know, you're not going to be healthy. That's the part that that really, really gets at me that makes me mad is that, hey, if you like oatmeal, eat oatmeal. But to tell people that they need it is essential for them and have people, you know, buying it and eating it, thinking they're doing something good for themselves, man, that's the part that really, you know, just annoys me. Yeah. You know, about so many of the foods, especially the grains, and the fruits and stuff like that. It's just like, you know, um, 
you have to get the message out to the people. People don't believe it. People, if people look at you like you got, you know, three heads when you tell them you don't, you know, I tell people I haven't had other than a tomato and a, and an avocado. I've not had a piece of fruit since April of last year, you know, and people are like, Oh my God, you, Oh, Oh, oh. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no, it's just, it's like, and Hey, if you want to eat fruit, eat fruit, but just know you don't need it. You don't have to have it, you know, and you know, your life will be great. You know, without it, eat it because you like it and it tastes good, not because you think you're going to die if you don't eat enough of it. Well, uh, luckily, the human body can survive on a wide range of foods. Yeah. Now, yeah yes. How you feel, that's another story. And yeah. me personally, I feel better eating meat heavy, you know, meat yeah. heavy keto at least. Um, but I could probably feel best eating carnivore, honestly. I never yeah. thought that that would be the case. So I really was just going to do carnivore for 30 days, 60 days, turned into 90 days. And then I was like, I can't stop now, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've wavered. It's not like, you know, I've yeah. already said I've added things back in. I had a few weeks where I tried a veggie here, a veggie there. Um, more than anything, it ended up le left. It left me feeling really bloated and just waterlogged, <laughs> you know, um, one day I ate a bunch of, um, cucumbers and celery and I just felt waterlogged. Like I just felt like, Oh, you know, but I mean, it's my body. I'll eat what I want, you know, and I don't no. I can call myself a, uh, you know, I don't know what <laughs> I can call myself, whatever I want to call myself. So. We're ketogenic. You know, we're, we're ketogenic people. You know, um, I'm we, primarily uh, carnivore, so I call myself yeah. carnivore. Me, me and too. I, I, some people I are primary yeah. carnivore, carnivore, and they call themselves ketovore. But absolutely, you know. absolutely. And it's my party, I and I will cry if I want to. <laughs> yeah, yes, we've had a couple going to come together right now over me. Over me. Uh, you know. I prefer to call myself a ketogenic person um, because, again, I'm like you. I have my definition of carnivore. It's not the same as everybody else's. You know, if I have a nice steak and I, you know, saute some mushrooms and put it on there and some butter, to me, I don't think that makes me not carnivore. You know, exactly. I just don't. But other people are like, oh, whatever. Um, now if I make asparagus and broccoli and a big salad <laughs> to go with it, okay. Yeah, I think you're crossing the line there, maybe a little bit. I um, think it's my line and I'll cross it if I want to. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I don't think using vegetables as a garnish or just as a little bit of a, you know, for flavor. I put a little salsa in my ground beef, stuff like that. So that's my definition of carnivore. Um, I don't eat you know, and prepare vegetables by themselves. I don't eat salads. I don't, you know, I, I do season with a few vegetables and that sort of thing. And so that's my definition of carnivore. And I and eat that just, way, you know. I'm sorry. Can't we just go to proper human diet? Like, can we just yeah. implement that from Dr. I love Barry? All that stuff. I, you know, I, listen, but, you know, some people don't want to be seen as ketogenic. They, you know, they want to be, I mean, I've heard, I've had people in the, in the you know, we're carnivores. We're not keto, get it? We're not okay. Carnivores are keto. I mean. DK, my man, DK is in the building. How you doing, Dustin? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Appreciate you coming by to say hey. That's my man. Check out his channel, Keto Simple. Man, there's so many things going on over there. Good. He's got a lot of great videos. We're gonna do something here soon together. He's gonna come on uh, with me one of these days. A co-host, great guy, good friend, and. Um, He's he's a he's a chaffle master too, man. You know, it's funny we were talking about it, and then I ended up going to his channel, and he had a bunch of different chaffle recipes on there. And um, yeah, you know, I'm with you on that, Rick. I totally agree. But it's you know, it's, it's human nature to divide. You know, to find ways to divide ourselves and all that stuff. Um, you know, I'm not. You know, I'm just not with that. I want to. You know, I want to. I'm a big tent person. I'm a ketogenic person, and I and I slide. You know. If I had to, if I had to put a percentage on it, I would say I'm carnivore by my definition, probably 75% of the time. 
Um, and I'm carnivore by others definitions, maybe 60% of the time, 5% of the time. I ain't nothing. I'm five percent of the time. I'm wilding. I'm out in the streets, sis. I'm getting <laughs> eat over. Honestly, I'm gonna, the, I'm the, further, eat over. <laughs> the further we get into this, like I mean, some of us have been together for like the last year. You know, we all kind of started around the same time. Yeah. Um, a lot of us did. Um, of course, a lot of us were keto before that. We just weren't part yeah. of this community, but. Honestly, the topic just gets kind of boring. It's like splitting yeah. hairs. Who really yeah. cares? I'm Kim. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you know, yeah. I definitely and I zero definitely, percent vegan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, but people do ask. People do believe it or not. So you know, it's are you carnivore? Are you this? Are you that? <laughs> so it's something that you know. If you're at least for me, I don't know about you in the YouTube streets. You know, it's something that people ask you. What do you eat? How do you eat? What do you consider yourself? Are you this? Are you that? So at least for me, it's something I'd say at least once a week I have to answer for somebody, yeah, yeah. you know, what I eat and how I eat and what I do. So that's why I talk about it. Um, you know, I talk about topics that people bring up. But, yeah, I, I call myself ketogenic. And, you know, like I said, I slide. And that's what's important is just keep your carbs low. Keep your proteins and fats high and call yourself whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> he even supplies him with their drug of choice. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. As yeah. always, if you want to come join us, you know, there's uh, links in the chat. And so, uh, uh, by the way, oh, go ahead. I posted go ahead. the link, but let's see. Oh, I see you're posted the link now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it should be in there definitely. It's not if you sure need enough, it. it's like clickable for me. Maybe it is for everybody else. I do not know, but let us know if you have problems or don't see it or whatever. And uh, by the way, okay, a moment of silence. We need to have a moment of silence for the Kentucky Wildcats. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, uh, I got. That's the best pout I got. How about this one? <laughs> yeah, we need a new coach. <laughs> uh, really, do you think so? Do you think so? Oh, I thought I thought this was going to be fun and not depressing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun for me. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Listen, and Buckeyes had a coach years ago in football, John Cooper. And he was a great recruiter. Like he would get great talent and great teams, and it, but they never could win the big game. They always disappointed. And I hate to say it, but I'm thinking Coach Cal might be in that same kind of ballpark. Like he's a great recruiter. He can get the players and the teams. He's a cool guy. A lot of people like him, but the teams always seem to underachieve. Yeah. You, am I, I am off on that? I know. And you can only blame the players for so long. I mean, yeah. you, you know, know, we I mean, do recruit the best players in the country. So yes. And they nice. just yeah. can't, they all, and it's like, it's not like you get to the championship game and lose, or you get to the final four and get beat by another great team in that it seems like they always they just underachieve and they get beat by teams that they yeah. should be or teams that are better than. And that's the part that just makes you wonder, you know? I mean, you yeah. saw what the Buckeyes did this year. I mean, we fired our coach in the middle of the season and our team instantly got like, dude, like, we get out of coach. here. We we fired the coach and the next week we beat Purdue, which is the number one team in the country at the time. The next week. And went on a that, tear. That shows it was a little bit of morale involved there with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, coaching, man, coaching. So mm -hmm. I don't know what the answer is, but yeah, I was thinking of you. I started to make a wellness check. I started to call you back. Are you okay? Do I need to, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, my poor nurse Kim was something else. So I mean, no, I, my husband is, he's suffering more than I am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Cause like I said, my team didn't even make the tournament, so I can't really talk a lot of trash 
Uh, so, you know, hey, I root for who my, my people like. I was rooting for UK. I know you like Kentucky. I got some other friends in different states. I was like rooting for their teams. But oh, when I saw that, I was like, oh, no, poor Kim. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody out there, if you got a favorite team, if you got a team in the tournament, you can shout them out if you're rooting for anybody out there. That is awesome. I love this time of year. Same, and the, the ladies, too, the women's tournament's going on as well. So uh, I definitely watched some basketball over the last uh, uh, week. I love the tournament. I love the games. A lot of close games, double overtimes, you know, all that stuff. And, uh, yeah. Hey, Susan, good to see you. I didn't say that before. Appreciate you being in. What are you guys eating this week, guys? Uh, what are we eating out there? Oh, we have a guest. Uh, uh, ring the doorbell. <laughs> hey, uh, I was in the middle of a sentence. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm new here. I'm sorry. Uh, I get excited. You're right at home. You're right at home. Yes, there, there's somebody <laughs> came with you. But I will finish my, my question. Okay, finish your sentence. Finish your sentence. Oh, what are you guys eating out there this week? If you made something delicious and good, you put it in the chat. Let us know. Uh, I made uh, finishing up the oxtails I made and scrambled eggs uh, I made and some ground beef and I've been doing my chaffle stuff. So let's see what you guys are eating out there these days. Always good to know. And uh oh, look who we got. We've got all oh, everybody in this Paul. Come on in, brother. Hey, hey guys, how are we? <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the cookout, brother. Come on in, make yourself comfortable. You doing all right? Life good? Let's turn off the door, man. First time on a live, so thought I'd give it yeah, a crack. Huh? Yeah, listen, I appreciate that, man. We see you in the chat, hanging out. Yeah. We appreciate that, man. Always good to see you. So, what's happening with you tonight? What's going on? Tell the people who may not know you who you are, where you're from. Yeah, I uh, well, it's actually not night. It's actually eleven thirty in the morning where I am in Australia. Uh, yeah, there yeah, you go. It's pretty early still. Uh, where so I'm yeah. in far north Queensland, in a little place with only three hundred permanent residents. Wow, it's a pretty small little place. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I live in Australia. I live in uh, what's called far north Queensland. So I'm well up yeah. above Brisbane and all those guys. And uh, yeah, been. Carnival since the start of this year, pretty much on and off. A bit like you, a bit relaxed yeah. with it, mm -hmm. but uh, just trying to get over a bit of a sugar addiction is my main thing. Uh, that's why yeah. I'm Carnival or Kidovore or whatever we're labeling it at these days. And yeah, that's pretty much it. When we started talking about sacking coaches, I've got a pretty good uh, my team that I follow in the AFL, which is the Carlton Football Club. And I'm probably going to get, if there's any Aussies, they. Um, I don't know about this, but we've sacked uh, five. Well, we're on our fifth coach in 12 years. Oh. So we've got through a few. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as many yeah. as our prime ministers we had for a while there. <laughs> I got you. So when did you first hear about, you know, ketogenic living, carnivore diet, all that kind of stuff? Like, how, what was your introduction into it? It sounds like you didn't have, like, a serious medical condition maybe, but. No, no, uh, mine's all. I, um, I, I, so my. First introduction was through, like a lot of people, um, Joe Rogan, but not through Sean oh. Baker, through Mark Bell, Mark Smelly mm. Bell, who's a power lifter and entrepreneur. He, um, I remember him talking about it. I follow him on Instagram as well. And he, I remember him doing that when, when he first started a couple of years ago. I thought this is a bit out there, but whatever. And then same as everyone else, you know, you sort of forgot about it for a while and then Dante pops up in the uh, YouTube feed. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then I sort of did it for a little bit. I did it for about actually about 20 days for a while there uh, last year. Started to feel really good, but fell off the wagon and stuff around Christmas. And uh, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, back on the horse again, as they say, uh, this, yeah, this year. So it's been pretty consistent. A uh, few carbs here and there, but mostly, mostly meat. So probably yeah. uh, we're putting, Percentages like we're talking about, probably about 80 85 percent plus coffee. So I eat carnival, but I don't drink carnival. That makes sense. <laughs> hey, listen, you got to live a little, man. Listen, I people ask me, I, say, I live yeah. my life, 
I'm like, yeah. you know, yeah. hey, if you see me in the drive thru at the Krispy Kreme, don't judge me. I'm just saying, you know, maybe I'm having a bad day. I don't, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, I actually have something else in common, Russ, other than a good looks, is I actually own a racehorse as well. Oh, oh. Yeah, harness racing is big in Australia and New Zealand. Massive, so, massive, yeah. Absolutely. My whole absolutely. family's involved in I've owned several New Zealand bred horses through the years. And, yeah. uh, you know, you guys go the wrong way around the track. But other than that, you know. <laughs> like, like, sort of like, well, actually, it depends on which state you go in. We do opposite directions. Oh, so yeah, that, you, is, that is true. Because I've seen yeah, later. If you're in Western Australia, which is where I'm actually from, it's, uh, uh, it's the opposite way to, the, to some of the other states. Because Australia's yeah. weird like that. And but I am on the from. Correct side of the road. Sorry, I have to interject. And I am yeah. from the horse capital of the world. So, yes, yeah, so <laughs> Kentucky. Um, harness racing now, there, Kentucky is much more of a thoroughbred state, mm -hmm. but they have, um, they do have several harness racing. The Red Mile is probably the, you may have heard of the Red Mile. I don't know if you heard of the Red Mile, Paul. It's a very, it's like a hundred years old. It's, it's like oh, wow. a, it's ancient. Um, and they have a lot of stakes races there, the, the Tattersalls and the uh, a lot of world records. It's a it's a red clay track. A lot of world records have been set there um, and uh, super fast, lightning fast mile track. Uh, yeah. I've been there a few times and it's really cool because it is literally right in the middle of downtown Lexington. It's, <laughs> it's old school. Oh, cool. Cool. Back in those, yeah. back in those days you know, a hundred years ago, the horse racing and the tracks were like an integral part of society. It's like, it was like the public, the town square in many ways. And even yeah. if you go to out East, like to New York, like Yonkers Raceway or Garden State Parkway before they tore it down these places, the tracks were literally right in the middle of downtown and people would come in. If you see the old pictures and stuff, people would pile in there to watch the horses race because it was like, you know, a football game or whatever back then, you know, it was like a, a thing. Yeah. So they've tried a few times to tear the Red Mile down and build, you know, condos and, you know, all kind of stuff. Cause it's lit mm -hmm. and we just it's need more condos in the middle of downtown, you know, skyscrapers and all that. But I can't remember when, but it seemed like maybe about 10 years ago or, or maybe 20, they got it designated as a historic, you know, landmark or whatever. So now yeah. they can't they can't do that. They can't tear it down. Turn I it think in. You know more about the Red Mile than I do. <laughs> well, I just, I just know where it's at, and I've never been there. Yeah. But um, yeah. my husband yeah. actually works for the Jockey Club, though. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah. You um, know where they know. keep all the information about all the horses, and it's like the yeah. he's a computer guy. <laughs> I don't think they have a thoroughbred track in Lexington. I don't think it's Turfway. So, um, Keeneland is. Oh yeah, is that in Lexington? Yeah. Gotcha. Are you familiar gotcha. with Keeneland? Oh yeah, yeah. That's a big time, uh, big time track for thoroughbreds, not for standard breds like we race. Um, but uh, yeah, they have a few. They they they're having a bit of a renaissance and they're building more tracks. They built one in Corbin. Um, and they built one in Oak Grove, um, and uh, in Kentucky, yeah. So, anyway, this has been the Harness Racing Update. I'm your host, <laughs> Hope. <laughs> well, Hope was actually supposed to race today, but they got abandoned because of the weather down in on the Gold oh. Coast. It was going on in the too rain? Wet. Yeah, too yeah. much, way too much. It's been so I moved to where I am now seven months ago, and it's probably rained for eight months. But oh, that's wow. how much rain we've had. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, but uh, it's supposed to be. But, we're in a tropical. We're in the tropical climate. We're up above yeah. uh, Cairns and stuff, so it's pretty, pretty tropical here. Very humid. Yeah, so it's good for the pores though. It keeps them, keeps them cleaned out. Yeah. Uh, what about how did your family and your circle of friends? How did they appreciate or not your dietary changes? Or did you even tell them? <laughs> uh, so I, my partner is kiddo boy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids are adjusting slowly, <laughs> kicking and screaming. They're only young. <laughs> yeah. uh, the oldest one's just about to turn nine. So um, we're adjusting them as well across. Not that we're eating a lot of bad stuff, but 
um, where yeah. we are now, like I said, we can't get to a shop because we're it's you know, 300 people. There's no big shops here. Yeah. So we have to, you know, it's a half an hour drive to be able to go to the supermarket or to a butchering like that. So basically what we have is what we have. Uh, yeah. But my immediate family, my parents, they live on, still live in Western Australia. So they, mm-hmm. I've spoken to them about it. Um, they sort of understand and, you know, don't really question too many things. They just, that we just do our thing and, and that's it. Uh, my, uh, my, we live in the same town as my partner's mum and stepdad and she's sort of been having a few things where like, well, you know, if you switch over to carnivore and if she has oatmeal for breakfast every morning, things like right. that, where if you switch over, you're probably going to start to find there's changes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, no one sort of said, we sort of don't really advertise it, but we don't, if you know, people ask, you know, the only place to eat out here is the local pub. Um, and if you go there, just have a steak. No one really questions you anyway. Just don't have any sides. The more <laughs> you can look from the server because you don't want anything on the side. They want vegetables yeah, or yeah. chips or anything. But apart from that, everything else is pretty good. It's a small town, so people will find out eventually. Yeah. Now, now lamb is big down there too, right? Do you yeah, like lamb? Yeah. Yeah. Lots of lamb um, and beef. Like I live in an area where there's beef farms all around us and sugar yeah. farms, sugar cane. So I right. actually just so I work for a, a sugar milling factory that closed this week indefinitely and has been going for 130 years and it just closed down due to lack of funding but and put a bit of mismanagement but they um yeah so I live around basically cows and sugar uh, which is another yeah. combination but that's what we have in the area people that aren't growing cane anymore sugar cane are switching over to beef. And doing that or, or lamb, but it's mostly beef here. It's a bit too wet for for lamb or for sheep up here. Hmm. No. That's that's interesting. So um how soon after you started the diet, uh, changed your diet and that did you start noticing changes uh in your life and what kind of changes? So um when I did it the first time before Christmas, I sort of noticed pretty quickly and one of the reasons, the other reasons why I wanted to do it is, um, is just the mental clarity was a big one for me. Like I said, I don't have any real issues with um, any medical stuff apart from um, the sugar, which is a big one. But cutting that out, is that was probably the first thing. I haven't lost a lot of weight per se, but I'm doing like gym and stuff. So I think I'm losing, um, losing fat, but not necessarily losing weight. Um, I'm yeah, yeah. a pretty tall guy um, at six foot three and up, you know, over 100 kilos. So I'm not really looking to lose a lot of weight, but just yeah. lose the, the fat around the around the belly and stuff like that, which is the main thing. You're looking to be healthy. You're looking to get healthier. Yeah. yeah. Well, know, my what? dad's a diabetic, um, which oh, was yeah. self-induced. It wasn't. So I just want to make sure on top of that. The other thing uh, I got conscious of, so I've been a volunteer <laughs> firefighter for 18 years. And one of the big things we have, a lot of firefighters get cancer. Mm. Um, and obviously feeding sugar feeds that cancer. So yeah, that was the other reason. I sort of I sort of started put two and two together and went, well, we keep going down this way. It's because we're likely to there's ten cancers, the main one being ingestion of diesel fumes. Um, because mm. the trucks are inside a, a fire station, which inside yeah. a building. So the way I set up. Well, the stuff a bit different in Australia than in America. They um, so yeah, we're sort of getting dressed in an area where the trucks are running because you've got to build up the air. Mm-hmm. So then right. all of a sudden you're constantly breathing in fumes. So they're starting to fix that now. Um, all the rooms are now sealed so that no exhaust fumes can get through, and you get changed in a different area than than not. So than where the trucks are. Yeah, some exhaust fans or something when you crank the engines up. Yeah, like well, a the lot of the fire stations are. You know, 40, 50 years old, not something right. upgrade all the time, particularly volunteer stations. So they're not designed like that. You know, they're on the minimum amount of land where now they're having to add and add and add stuff to them as things change and they become aware of risk, which is what the exhaust fumes are. That's the big one at the moment. Um, you know, and when I first started, like we didn't use, like you've got the breathing masks, we didn't use them for everything like they do now. Like we weren't. If a vehicle caught fire, you wouldn't wear a breathing apparatus. You would just yeah. get in there and wear 
like that was 18 years ago, but now you wouldn't go near one without it because of the yeah. cast engines and it was what we know, you know. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. It's all changed, which is good. It's all changed for the better. Yeah. So did you do any blood work or anything like that before you started? No, uh, I haven't. I um I haven't. It's just it's not something that I've really done. I said I've never had any reason to. I don't feel yeah. unwell. Like I'm overweight, I know that. But I um it's more about and it's also a lifestyle. It's a lot easier to cook when you only have to cook steak. Yeah. yeah. Let's be real. Yeah, really? That's my favorite part. Yeah. I love just hand, cooking one thing. You know? Yeah. Eating on it for a week. I, mean, it, I do a bit of variety because of the kids and stuff like that. And my partner doesn't like eating the same thing all the time, but I could just eat yeah. steak or mince or whatever every day. And yeah, I have to have I have to have a, a little bit of variety. Yeah. I know lots of people who can eat steak or roast every day or eat the same thing every day. Yeah. About the third about the third or fourth day, if if, if yeah, somebody's gonna get thrown out a window. You know, if I <laughs> I mean that sometimes sense, yeah. I'm, down, I'm uh, I'm on the fourth day of whatever, I'm like, yeah, somebody's gonna die if I don't it ain't gonna be me if I don't get something else. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Yeah, so what's, so, your, what's your main go-to then? Uh, I have a rotation. Um, yeah. It's beef and ground beef, which I think you call mince. Beef yeah. it could be steaks, it could be brisket, it could be roast, it could be oxtails, you know, just some type of, of uh, beef. And then ground beef, I kind of put that separate from the steaks and the roasts and things like that. And then lamb, I, I do lamb, and then I'll do a little bit of chicken, um, and that's kind of my rotation. And then I have bacon pretty much all the time. And I have scrambled eggs pretty much all the time. And it's yeah. funny, the scrambled eggs are the only thing. And I, I only cook twice a week because I hate to cook. I hate the whole kitchen area. I'd only go in there because there's food in there. <laughs> uh, and, you know, so I cook twice a week. So I'll scramble up a dozen or two dozen eggs. I'll make, you know, five or six pounds of ground beef. I'll fry up three or four pounds of bacon, you know, and I have little glass dishes and I'll partition it out. And, you know, so um, that's kind of how I do it that way. Um, and so I'll have just a combination of those things, um, you know, throughout the week and just to kind of mix it up. But when I make steaks, you know, I'll usually make four or five at a time. So yeah, yeah. I'll have scrambled eggs and bacon or scrambled eggs and something you know, for my first meal of the day and then steak, you know, if I make salmon or if I make stuff, that'll be my sec usually my second meal of the day, unless I have a little bit with my eggs. But my first meal of the day is 99% eggs and something, <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how I, how, how I do it. Um, and then, you know, uh, I make a salmon salad that I snack on a little bit. I don't, although I really have, Cut down on my snacking quite a bit. Um, I used to eat a lot more eggs. I used to make egg salad. I stopped eating eggs so much, egg salad, because I eat scrambled eggs. I started doing a salmon salad and started making more ground beef. And since yep. I started eating more ground beef, I've noticed it seems to stick with me better and hold on to me more, and I don't snack um, really or feel like I need to snack. So um, that's kind of been a breakthrough. I've only been doing that for a few weeks, maybe a month now. Um, and it's working pretty well for me because, listen, I've lost almost 60 pounds and I do everything wrong. <laughs> I, I, when I changed over, I changed what I ate. I didn't change how I ate. Um, when I was doing the wrong things, eating all the wrong things, I was a grazer. I didn't sit down and just hammer big meals. I would eat, you know, all day long. I could kill a whole large pizza. I wouldn't sit there and eat the whole thing, but over the course of a couple hours, you know, a piece here and then two pieces. Of it. And I snacked a lot. I did all that stuff. I ate late at night. I kind of have a big, huge eating window. Um, you know, it's called daytime and nighttime. Um, uh, so, <laughs> you know, I'm cold awake when I'm awake. I'm yeah, awake. yeah. 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 Um, so, Again, trying to shrink that, but I just had trouble with it because those are my habits. I've been eating this way for 40 years. So those habits are still the same. It's just I eat something different now. Instead of eating, you know, pizza and stuff like that, it's egg salad or salmon salad, you know, but I still just snack a lot and stuff like that. So I know that to get to the next level, I really need to shrink that eating window. It also doesn't help that my 
I'm awake from about 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. generally, you know, every day. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I don't sleep much. I get it from my dad. So again, it's just a big time, but but it's 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 going very uh, much better. And uh, since I, I made those changes, um, you know, and with the ground beef, and so I like that. I like the routine, and we're gonna rock with that and see where that takes me. <laughs> you yeah. know, but it's a it's a message to everybody. You know, you you don't have to do it exactly quote unquote right, and you can still have good results. You know, I'm better off, you know, living a ketogenic life wrong, the wrong, <laughs> doing it quote unquote wrong than I was, you know, than you are doing the standard American diet. Um, you know, and you just get better as time goes on. You get stronger, you, you know, you just get better at it. You tweak, you know, and just try to steadily improve uh, to get where you want to go. Hey, Christy's here, everybody. Good to see you, sis. So, so yeah, man, that's, uh, that's kind of my, um, you know, my story with it. And, you know, I, I, I'm, it's my, it's my personality and my nature. I'm a kind of a roll with the punches kind of guy, go where the wind blows me kind of guy. I'm not a super structured, super disciplined, super regimented kind of person in any aspect of my life. So, you know, I just kind of do, do my thing, but my blood work is way better too. As a matter of fact, I'm getting my next round of blood work here soon, probably next week. I ordered my, I got, I went to ownyourlabs.com because that's where I do it. And I got my form. I haven't got, you know, I have a nurse come to the house and draw my blood for me and take it in. And I'm looking forward to this third round of blood work. Um, it's the first one to the second one was much improved. And that was Thanksgiving time was the last time I drew blood so it's been good grief it's hard to believe it's almost april so i'm excited about seeing the improvement to is there anything particular that you're looking for fasting insulin yeah my fasting insulin uh didn't drop significantly my liver numbers improved tremendously my um you know, the other numbers were, were strong. My uh, triglycerides went down. My HDL went up. My LDL went up. So many good things, positive things. Um, but um, I want my fasting insulin, to, you know, to come down. Um, my liver numbers could come down a little bit. And I want to get those triglycerides down and the HDLs up. That's, you know, my ratio um, was 2.6 and the 2.1 triglycerides to HDL, which is what, you know, Dr. Barry and those teach us that that's the most important risk factor for heart attack and stroke. It should be less than one, but I went, but 1.5 and up is dangerous. So I went from 2.6 to 2.1. Obviously I want to get that to under one, but even if it comes down under two, that'd be great. Just, you know, continue lowering that risk of heart attack and stroke. Yeah. And, um, my liver numbers could be a little bit better, um, you know, so, so yeah, shout out to, uh, Arlene. Good to see you, sis. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, if you like the snack, I get the can set now, you know, the best, the way I like it the most, but I'm, I don't do it so much is I like to make the salmon and then chop it up and all that. But I do use canned salmon a lot too, because I'm just too, you know, the whole kitchen thing. Um, so, and I use the mayonnaise that I use is the chosen foods, 100% avocado oil mayonnaise. Um, so it's got no seed oils. It's, it's clean, very few ingredients, and it's made with hundred percent avocado oil. Some people make their own mayonnaise again, no shot at me doing that. Um, so yeah, and it's delicious. And I talked a little bit about my chaffle game. My chaffle game is it's, it's, I'm elevating my chaffle game. So now I can have like a sandwichy sort of effect with my salmon salad and my breakfast. I had, um, you know, some eggs some bacon, slather some mayo on there and use my chaffles and knock it down. It's wonderful. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's what I do. And I'm glad to hope that that helps great snack. If you're a snacker, um, you know, and of course it's, uh, loaded with, um, some good things. I think the omega, what is it to help me out? Okay. Omega threes. Isn't that what we want? Not omega sixes. No, we want omega threes. We have plenty gotcha. of omega sixes. Gotcha. I mean, you get omega sixes and just about everything. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. 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 Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> the Duck Slayer is in the building. Oh, your stream the went Duck downhill Eric. instantly. <laughs> it is uh Waterfowl's most wanted. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm just finishing up my dinner. I got home a little late from work. Uh What is that? Kentucky you know, fried chicken? No, it's a uh, pork shoulder. It's boiled pork shoulder. <laughs> I love it. Boiled. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Boiled. Yep. Yeah. Hey, this is, you know, don't defile it. You get, don't put a smudge on your camera lens, man. Be looking at you through <laughs> pork water grease. Oh, uh, you know, I'm covered in lard most of the time anyway. I got lard on my skin, <laughs> lard on my hair, lard on my furniture. You know, I have to clean that every week. That's a real process. Oh. My doorknob's got lard on it, tallow, you know. This place is so full of fat. It's a wonder that I don't weigh a ton. <laughs> there you go, man. Well, it fat is... doesn't make you fat. That's why. That's like right. My mom used to say, Lord will make your hair fall out. Look at what it did to mine. Yeah. <laughs> hey, and listen, the sad part is, folks, he's not joking. <laughs> he's not... <laughs> there are no jokes there. <laughs> Russ, Russ knows the real Rick. Believe me. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> like a little bird. <laughs> 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 Where is it? Yes. Oh. Well, uh, okay. I, 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 I'm going to do this, although I shouldn't. How was your day today, Rick? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. I, I had some work to do in the morning, but then my van decided to break down. The fuel pump was acting up. So I had electrical problems. So I, I came back here, and then I had to go to Napa Auto Parts and get a connector. Um, here's the box that it came in. <clears throat> what it was is the, the wires that go to the fuel pump, it was all rusted. It was melted. So I went and cut that out. I fixed it. I've been trying to fix the air conditioning in my van anyway. So I got that working. I got the fan working. I got to figure out where the refrigerant leak is. But it's only a matter of time before... I'll be able to ride in an air-conditioned van, and one day when I move, it'll be full of ducks, and they'll be nice and comfortable. I'll even have a mobile duck pond to keep them happy. The only bad <laughs> thing is, you know, when you're driving on the highway and they start trying to fight or mate, that's when things can get a little difficult. Plus, you don't want to slide on the duck poop, so, you know, that'll be a challenge right there. But other than that, they'll be comfortable. I got you, man. Did you kill anything this week? Um... No, I actually rescued a couple of ducklings from the drain. Now, I was riding my bike to Napa today, and there was a big iguana right there by the canal. And I saw him, and I got off my bike, and I ran. But then I slipped in the grass because the shoes I got are worn out, and he got in the canal. I'm like, oh, man, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, I didn't have a bag to hold him, so I would have had to tie him up and stick him in the bicycle basket. But I would ride back home and then put him in a cage and then go to Napa and then come back and then... When I was ready, I could prepare him for dinner. But eh, you know what? I'll find another one. They're starting to come out now, I think, because the weather's warmer. and I see more and more of them. So I'll just make sure I keep my net with me the next time I'm on my bike. I always keep a net in my van just in case I see one. And once in a while, one of my customers will have an iguana that's harassing them. I'll just I'll take it away. You know, sometimes I charge for it. Most of the time it's free, you know, free iguana removal. I'll remove it from their yard and put it straight into my stomach. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Iguana How do you kill an iguana? Do you the ring easiest way is just stick a knife in the back of the neck of the iguana, and then they just die instantly. I mean, you could try to hit them with a rock. I've done that before when the iguana's running away, and I'll, I'll throw a rock at it. I've gotten them with the shovel. I've gotten them with machete. I mean, there's many ways you can get them, but if, if you got the iguana handy, you just stick them in the back of the neck, and they're they're done. You know, or if you shoot them, I mean, usually I'll shoot them with an arrow. I use either the crossbow or I was even thinking about using a bow fishing bow. And I've seen the rednecks out there bow fishing. I'm thinking, you know, they can catch fish like that. Maybe I can catch an iguana like that. Can't be that hard. <laughs> there you go, folks. The world's foremost expert on iguana side. If you want to go on a side, this is your man. I'm just telling you, I'm telling you that. And well, we there's... learned last we learned last week, or two weeks ago, I can't remember what week it was, that it tastes like fish or chicken. 
-hmm. depending upon where you get it and what it's been eating. That's so right. Who knew? You're going to be an iguana connoisseur. You know, it's like when you yeah. were talking about using coconut flour. When I was taking care of my mom, because she was a pain in the neck, pain in the neck to give food to. She didn't like beef, but I she did like shrimp. So I'd go in the backyard and I'd crack open some coconuts and shave the inside of the coconut, batter the shrimp and some duck eggs, roll it through the coconut and fry it up in some tallow or lard. And my mom would eat it. So even though that wasn't a carnivore food, it was pretty close to it. And I got to admit, I've eaten coconut shrimp. It tastes pretty good. So, you know, don't poo poo the coconut eaters when you're a carnivore because, hey, coconuts are all around here. You walk outside, there's coconuts all over the place. My mom says, I want something different. I don't want to just eat slabs of meat like you do. Every time I see you, you're chewing on a piece of meat. You don't need anything else. You know, you're you're like a cat. All you do is eat meat all day. Well, yeah, you know, but unlike a cat, I don't sleep all day. You know, I sleep at night. But yeah, the coconut, I, I was thinking about that when you said it, because my mom loved that coconut shrimp. That was the one carnivore food she looked forward to. Well, you got any shrimp? Absolutely. They had it on sale in the store and. You know, I didn't tell her I was using duck eggs. I told her, I, you know, eggs from the store. But I, I normally use duck eggs because I just wanted to get even with my mom because she kept telling me I was going to die of salmonella from eating duck eggs. And <laughs> I'm going to be 56 in three months. And let me tell you, I haven't died yet. So I guess the duck eggs aren't toxic after all. Although death has been wished upon you by waterfowl from coast to coast. <laughs> that and a bunch, a bunch of lizards and, and vegans. Yeah, too, the reptiles. You know? Yes, the, uh, yes, the uh, Reptile Association of America has issued a bounty for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've eaten many different reptiles, you know, not just iguanas. I've eaten gator tail before, but I don't want to eat too much gator because you got to, you know, you got to get a permit to hunt it and all that. And then on top of that, they concentrate heavy metals. I generally don't eat carnivores. I tend to eat herbivores. And that's what an iguana is, basically, other than a few insects. A duck lucky is pretty for much... us. <laughs> What's that? I said lucky for us. Yeah. Oh, that's it. <laughs> now, this is no Jeffrey Dahmer house, so you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> good, good, good. You look at my refrigerator, it's it's iguanas <laughs> and it's uh, various other animal parts, but no human parts. Do you see that, Rick? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know, and ducks. <laughs> the funny thing is that I'm actually one of the ducks' best friends. I must have rescued at least two or three hundred ducklings from the drains. And I've even put videos of some of the ducklings I rescued, and Aww. some of them have grown up to be big, fat ducks. But, you know, in, in my yard, it's it's a little different than, like, if you go to a place where they raise chickens, they, they grind up all the male chicks, the roosters, because they don't want them. But in my little flock it works a little differently i raise all the ducklings the any any that survive then they become male and female and of course the females they lay eggs so they give me delicious eggs and they're a little bit small and the males they'll sort of battle it out to see who's the top duck and usually the male ducks that kill ducklings or attack females or whatever then i deal with them i give them an attitude adjustment and that usually involves you know high temperature on the stove so that's <laughs> pretty much you know so my duck flock is happy. The females are not missing feathers because they're not overbred. And the males that I have are generally friendly. They don't attack. You know, some of the people that feed the ducks, they have aggressive ducks that get out there and they bite people and they get in the trash can. Some of these ducks, they'll tip over the trash can and rip open the garbage bag. It's just amazing how aggressive they can be when they're hungry. But my ducks, they're pretty calm. I keep the population down. You know, I'm eating most of their eggs. So they're not multiplying. And if you look on the Internet, you'll see there's a lot of these people that make money doing what they call duck removal. They have these so-called wildlife pest removers or whatever, which I, I don't like them every time I've seen them. I've actually flattened their tires and I've thrown rotten duck eggs at them when they were in the neighborhood <laughs> trying to steal my ducks. I threw an egg in the guy. Another guy, I pulled a gun on him. I told him, you come in my yard. You're not leaving. Comes in my yard, try to catch a duck. I stick it right through the fence. It's like, no, you're not coming in my yard. Ooh, he never came back. So, so you, have people, street, you, have, you have people come and try to steal your ducks? Yeah, because they got these, well, they got these people that they, they take away ducks. I guess mm -hmm. they get paid $40 a duck or whatever to remove them and kill mm -hmm. them from these condominiums and stuff. And some of the neighbors don't like the ducks. I had a neighbor that didn't like the ducks, so he kept calling these people. And, you know, I, I'd keep an eye on them. I'd see them around the corner. Like I said, I flattened their tires a couple times. And they didn't like that. Of course, they didn't know it was me. 
And then I've thrown <laughs> rotten duck eggs at them. That's my way of getting them. I see them out there. And my yard's full of bushes, so you can't see me. I get up on the roof, and I'm good at throwing a duck egg. You know, I should have been, I don't know, a basketball player or a baseball. I don't know. But I, I could throw a duck egg from 100 feet away, and it'll go right on their forehead. And when you have a nasty, old, rotten, abandoned duck egg that's been sitting in the yard for a month, it's black. When it hits, it makes a popping sound like somebody popped a, you know, like remember when we were kids, kids would jump and they'd stomp on the milk carton and it would go boop and it would pop. I don't know if you probably remember that. Remember yeah. in school they had those little milk cartons? It's just like that, pop. And you hear that thing pop and the smell is so bad. There's flies buzzing around. It's It's horrible. So, you know, somebody comes snooping around with their net to catch the ducks. They end up wearing a nasty duck egg on their head. What are they going to do? Call the police? Oh, I was attacked by a duck. But come on. <laughs> there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we have a question for Paul. Paul, do you have a channel that uh, you want to promote or plug here? Uh, no, I don't. I'm just sort of dipping my toe in the uh, YouTube water, if you like, just at the He's moment. Just hanging out at the cookout, baby. He's that's hanging it. out. And that's what it's all about, man. Just come on in, hang out with us, talk talk about whatever you want to talk about. It's a fun live stream for the family just to come out and socialize. We are way more than what we eat, as you can tell, family. Some of us uh, assault people with duck eggs. You know, who would have you know, who would have thought that would be a subject? <laughs> we've, we've covered it all. We've talked about basketball, we've talked about harness racing, we've talked about I mean, you just never know what we're going to talk about. We had a moment of silence for the Kentucky Wildcats. We th we've done it all here today. Oh, there's a cat right there. <laughs> got yeah, we've got hey, there's a, a little a little wild kingdom going on there. We got it all. Yeah. The keto, <laughs> the keto yeah, I, out, man. I love that. What do you think about all this? Paul? We can't. Oh, go ahead, Kim. I was just going to say we we talk about this diet so much to our friends and family that it gets on their nerves. So we come here so we can share it with each other. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's just more fun this way because yeah. You know, yeah. they, yeah. they don't like I us have, to go on and on and on about it. It's, you know, evidently I just, annoying. I have vegan friends. So you can only imagine how I much too. fun that is. There, there you go. <laughs> my, my, one of my very best friends is vegetarian. And my other friend, she's a pretty good friend of mine. She's uh, She was vegan. I think she's gone back to vegetarian. But yeah. So which I'm happy about because I'm like, yeah, eggs or whatever you're eating. <laughs> but I, I think she's probably adding eggs. I don't know. Yeah. I is mean, I guess that doesn't really mean, I guess, never mind. There, there's vegetarian is just a complicated thing. You know, they got that whole ovo lacto, you know, yeah. Pescatarian. So it, I could never, it can never be me. Is your friend a um, junk food vegetarian or a whole food vegetarian? Because there is a difference. Um, So there is a mixed breed of vegetarian. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's one that makes homemade soups that are, delectable and always has just delicious vegetarian meals prepared, but then they eat Kit Kats too. So oh, it, she's yeah, kind well, of great. <laughs> no, I, I don't know that anybody knows more vegetarians than I. I've been in the seventh day Adventist church since the seventies. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I know I went to seventh day Adventist boarding school for four years, vegetarian. Um, they don't serve any meat there, but Thanks, the young the junk vegetarians, junk food vegetarians eat a lot of the fake meats and the, you know, I call it fake steak and phony bologna. And <laughs> it's just a bunch of just, I mean, it's just, you know, and then, you know, I was, I, I lived with one for six years that didn't eat any vegetables. Her, her idea of vegetables was lettuce, cheese and croutons. <laughs> I mean, that was, I mean and she was, a, and our freezer was, I mean, just loaded with every kind of fake steak and phony bologna you could imagine. <laughs> everything went <laughs> from, from a chicken nugget to a, I mean, it was just like a, and it was just, it's not, it's just not even food. It's editable laboratory experiments. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really what it is. That's and, right. you know, she was, you know, like I said, I always had problems. But then I have a, a there's the other side that's whole food. A lot of the folks I grew up around and grew up with grew their own vegetables. They eat a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruit, beans, grains, but they didn't eat any of that.
processed food, um, you know, any of that kind of stuff. And those people were generally healthier than the junk food vegetarians. But the hidden, the hidden thing about, you know, the vegetarian is when in, in many, many cases, I could give you a hundred cases, um, when they get older, very frail, very feeble, um, bone density, muscle mass, brittle bones. That's the, that's the, the kind of the hidden secret about a lot of the, the vegetarians. When they get to a certain age, they just start to fall apart. And I don't see that, you know, with people, you know, who are, um, in those ages that are, are meat eaters. I could, again, I could give you 20 off the top of my head <laughs> that, that are, that are like that. Just people that are close to me. Um, both my grandmothers, you know, died when their nineties, they were feeble, but they weren't frail. Yeah. Um, you know, my uncle Joe is 90 over the nine, he's 90 to be 91 here in June. And again, he's feeble, but he's not frail. Eats meat every day, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so it makes a difference. I, I really believe that the protein that you get from plants is not of the same caliber. It's a second rate, low quality protein. There's, there's no protein from any pea or walnut that's going <laughs> to equal the, that equal the protein from ruminant meat. Or it's peanut. A, yeah. It just or doesn't walnut. work that way. And so, uh, yeah, but yeah, I know a lot of diet normal vegetarians and they really are whole food vegetarians, like my family. Whole food vegetarians. They don't eat a lot of junk, you know, uh, meat and that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of whole foods, but same kind of thing. You know. Speaking of junk, you ought to see, I got my newspaper ad today and they have all these coupons. I mean, look at this crap that people eat. Yeah. And that isn't even the worst. At least it's got some kind of meat in it. When yeah, I was that looks like a health there. option. <laughs> a healthy option. But look, at they got when the nasty, was... disgusting fries. I've tasted these things before. They're awful. It's like eating an old now. sponge. They're nasty. Easy now on my beloved potato. I oh, mean, you know, nasty. Listen, hey, you will get banned from this channel if you take it any of this <laughs> too much fun. <laughs> hey, listen, when I was young and in my prime, I used to eat that all the time. That's all I <laughs> If you're going to carve out, skip the potatoes. Eat a plantain. It's much better. No shot, man. Listen, hey, uh, you, listen, if you ever see me trapped in a net, they use potatoes to get me there. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you, have you, you ever had fried plantains? Hey, I don't give not one third of a darn. About a fried plantain. There is oh, nothing that equals I'll, I'll tell you one thing. potato and the gravy. You're wrong. That's oh, how you catch me. If you want to set, if you want to set a trap for homesick Buckeye, you <laughs> I will walk right past that cake and right past all that stuff, and I will jump head first into the mashed potatoes and gravy. That's how you get. If you if you're out there trying to set a trap for me, that's how you get me. I'm just telling you right now. Well. If you're going to set a trap for me, it better be something that runs away or at least a big old tomahawk steak. Yeah. 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 If I want to set a trap for you, I'll get an iguana, like a like iguana, and, you know, a stuffed iguana, and I'll just sit him right there somewhere. And <laughs> put a big, put a big, Give it a pull. Big, uh, yeah. No, like, a, uh, uh, you know, when the ground drops out un underneath yeah. you, like, you know, <laughs> I'll just put it right in front of that. <laughs> and you get it with your bone arrow, and as soon as you take three steps towards it to get it, <laughs> boom! <laughs> but I'm, I'm serious though. If you like potatoes and you ever get on one of those carb cravings, skip the potatoes and hit the plantain. But the plantain has to be cooked in beef tallow, and you'll never want a potato in your life again. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen. How much you want to bet on that? Hey, listen, I, now, the best you could hope for is I would want the plantain and the potato. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's as good as it's going to get on that bet. But the chance of me never, that's the one thing, like I said, in my old life, you know, I, but here's the thing, man, and I, I mean this, like, if I want to eat it, I'll eat it. You guys know me. We talked about this a million times. I eat what I want to. It's what I want to eat has changed because mm -hmm. of the knowledge that I have now. But on Thanksgiving Day, Man, I don't fall off the wagon. I jump off the wagon. 
market. Okay, I mean, I yeah, the, the heck with that wagon on on a few days a year, it's going down. See, okay, right. Russ, yeah, this is where you and I must differ because okay, I feel so bad after I eat something that's not you know around about the proper human diet plan. Um, yeah. that. I mean, I, I do it a lot just be, I mean, not a lot, but I do it from time to time just because I, I don't learn very easily. You know, I, I'm, I'm a slow learner and I always think yeah, I, I can I, justify I, I, it, you know, with my, but yeah, I mean, I just feel so bad. It's like. I can relate to that because uh, last week when my family was here, I had a bag of potato chips and I felt bad that it was the only bag left and I couldn't eat another one. I know exactly what yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I have not maybe I haven't gotten that far along in my keto life. I don't feel bad. I never felt bad in the first place. Um Yeah, see that's what yeah. brought me to this. Yeah. I didn't choose I didn't, this, it chose me. Yeah. No, I, I was just heavy. I never was sickly. I, I say it all the time. I've never spent a night in the hospital. I've never taken a medication other than, than antibiotic. I wasn't sickly. I didn't have trouble sleeping. I didn't, all I had, I just was so heavy. I couldn't support my weight. That was my only problem was just being heavy. And when I eat the wrong stuff now, I don't feel bad. I feel the only thing I do feel, and I, it truthfully, is tired. So like if I eat something, I just get drowsy, but I don't feel bad. I just feel like I need to go lay down. You know what I mean? So I hear people talk about aches and pains and okay, if I felt like I got hit by a truck after I ate a biscuit, I wouldn't eat it either. You know, but I don't feel bad when I eat that stuff. I just, but I do feel drowsy. Like you know, if I eat some high carb stuff, I got to go to sleep. I can't eat like a, a high carb breakfast and then go to work. No shot. I'll need to take a nap, but I can eat what I eat now. You know, I can eat eggs and all that stuff and then go work and be alert and all that. So yeah, I, I can honestly say I feel different when I eat that way, but I don't feel bad. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I would cough yeah. constantly for months on end if I ate that way. And whether it's caused from candida, which I kind of always suspected. Um, I mean, I pretty much confirmed with, I would take the medication that was supposed to get to rid my body of that. And then I would stop coughing. So it's, it was pretty obvious that that's what it was, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but whatever it was, it, it was like, my body was like, Oh heck no, you are not going to eat this. And yeah, I just yeah. would keep trying because an addicted brain just wants to tell you, yeah. oh, well, you can probably, it's been long enough now. You could probably have like a little bit, right? Yeah. You could have just one donut. I mean, that's not, who's that going to hurt, right? Okay. Ask me this question. Here's something I don't understand. And, and Paul, you can jump in too, because I heard you say something earlier about <laughs> sugar addiction. What is the difference between the uh, an addiction? And just flat out liking something. Uh, help me understand the, the difference between the two. I mean, I understand what well, crack addiction is. I mean, I understand. I, you know, I never, I wouldn't kill my, you know, I wouldn't steal from my friend to get a cupcake. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, I, I mean, wouldn't. It's really, it. it's really mm -hmm. a matter of semantics. Okay. But okay. for me, I call it an addiction because I did behave, I, I did behavior to get the food and to keep the food that I was ashamed of. And I was obviously ashamed of it because I would hide it. Mm. I would go eat the donuts in the parking lot by myself. And I would be embarrassed if anybody knew how many I ate. Um, I would hide candy bars in my bedside table. And it wasn't like I had to hide it from my husband. I mean, he wouldn't have, you know, teased me about it or anything, but I would. So I was obviously embarrassed about it and just felt like it was, you know, just wrong for me to be. And it wasn't just one candy bar. It would be like three or four candy bars, you know. Yeah. Um, and so it just it's when you feel like you just need to go back and eat more and more and more and more, you know, it, it feels like an addiction, whether it actually is or not. I mean, like I said, semantics, it's just it's not good for me. 
So yeah, no. But I don't know about Paul. I get that, and I really, I, I really want to understand because I, it's not exactly my experience. Go ahead, Paul. Pop in here. So I think it's pretty much exactly what Kim said, but also for me, like if I would to have say everyone knows what Tim Tams are, so chocolate biscuits. It's not Never just really. having. I think someone said in the chat, it's not just having one or two. The whole packet's gone. You know, there's nine biscuits and they're all gone. And just there's no like I know Kerry talks about having an off switch. And by biscuits, me, you like mean cookies, a right? Game. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you mean cookies, right? Like our cookies what? or sure biscuits? Biscuits, yeah, chocolate okay. biscuits, chocolate okay. cookies. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Tim Tams are just biscuit wrapped in covered in chocolate, um, which Ew. you know they're Australian staple pretty much around <laughs> the world now. But so it's not so there's nine yeah, in the sick. packet, and I would have one or two, and then similar to what you're saying about grazing earlier, you go back, and then there's two more, and then two more, and then before you know it, the packet's gone. And then you're like, well, like, and, you know, I've never, like, the, like I said before, Kerry says that there's no off switch, but for me, it was actually a floodgate. Once it opened, that was it. And then it was whatever was in the house was gone. Oh. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, definitely, I definitely understand that part of it because I was talking about to somebody about, about uh, moderating and, so I think I get it from that. So I, 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 and they say, oh, well, you moderate. I'm like, no, I don't moderate. I just decide today I ain't doing that. Today I'm eating this or that. Or that. Now, to me, here's the difference. Like, and okay, you down there making faces. We're talking about eating donuts, and the guy's looking there with the gas face. Dude, you eat iguana feet. What are you talking about, <laughs> man? It's like. Hey. <laughs> Iguana feet are delicious, but yeah. a donut cookies are disgusting. Yeah, just, I guess you, yeah, you, you know what I do with a bag of cookies? Feed them to the ducks. That's right. <laughs> I know. Oh, yes. I know. I know. You, I know. Well, it's like listen. Potato chips. Ew, yeah, everybody, disgusting. everybody is not going to be scraping the dirt out from under iguana toenails and eating them. Okay. So, <laughs> 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 but, but here's the thing, like with me, it, my, I got this size. On laziness, because I was a happy fat guy for a long time. I still am a happy fat guy, technically. Yeah. That's a good um, thing. But I, but ignorance, ignorance. I gained another, you know, probably forty pounds trying to lose weight because I was pounding granola and fruit and and <laughs> and all this stuff, thinking that that's how you do it. And you know, I, I gained even more weight. But to me, here's a, here's the difference from. Why I see it. So maybe we're saying the same thing in a different way. If I went and got a big bag of, of, you know, I went to Costco and got a big thing, let's say, of of chocolate covered almonds, and I put them out there in my kitchen, and I'm I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna have a few of those every, you know, weekend or something. That wouldn't work. Okay, that ain't gonna work. I'll end up eating them. Fair enough, because I like them. They, they're delicious. But that, to me, is different than saying, hey, on Thanksgiving Day, I'm going to drive 300 miles to my uncle's house, and I'm going to forget I ever even uh, – keto, who is that? Yeah, because that's a and, decision. Like, you're making a and conscious then, decision. And, then, and then, then drive 300 miles back home where there is nothing but beef, bacon, butter, and eggs in my house. That Right. That's not moderating to me. Moderating is trying to do something on a regular basis a little bit at a time. I can't, I'm not doing that. That's not I mean, going to so work. That is moderating um, mm -hmm. because you can just do a little bit of it and then be done with it. And you're not going back home and trying to think of a way that you could make that again. Which I would be my daughter. Right. Yeah. When I, so when I go down there, I'm like, yeah, keto, what keto who? I don't know him. I don't know him. He's that, you know, I don't know who that is. I, um, I have but, my own view of addiction, you know, yeah. My view of addiction is anything that controls you that you can't control. Yeah. So if it controls you, you're addicted. Now, yeah. I guess by that definition, I'm addicted to steak because when I have a lot of steak, I will eat it and eat it and eat it until I can't swallow literally anymore. You know, yeah. I start swallowing, it starts backing up and I have to kind of stand up and let it go down. That's when I know I've had too much steak and that could be four or five pounds, six pounds of steak. And I've had people look at me like, there is no way you can eat that much. And I eat a ton of it. But if you give me the potato chips, you know how Lay's used to say, 
you, you can't eat just one. Just one. Oh, I yeah. used to joke. I said, that's all I can eat. So I, I thought I thought they were trying to say that they're so nasty that you can't eat just one. I, it like as a kid, I, I thought about it. It's like, I hate those things. I, and the only thing worse than Lay's potato chips were Frito's corn chips. And I always wondered why the Frito Bandito wanted them because I didn't want them. You know, if the Frito Bandito says, uh, give me your Frito's corn chips, I go, here, take it. Take them all. I don't care. I don't want the corn chips. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am the Frito yeah. Bandito. That shows what I, I remember as a kid. Said, I, I've, 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 this is the longest stretch that I've had my family here with me. Normally, like I said, I live alone. Just me. I don't have a lot of outside influence in terms of diet. Like sometimes somebody will bring a pizza by or something like that every once in a while or, some, or something. Or during the holiday season, my family bake holiday cookies and send them to me. Little things like that. But 90% of the time, I don't have a lot of outside you know, influence. But with my family being here for the last you know few weeks, there's a lot of things and I just nibble. I really do because I don't, I don't want to go back. It's like, have you ever lived? Like if you live in a terrible neighborhood and you move out, you still drive through every now and again, maybe to see the old neighborhood and you know, to, to, but you don't want to live there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to move back there. I'll, I'll go in and drive around and see the old friends and then I'm out. And that's kind of how I feel about my old diet. That's why I don't eat keto pizza or keto muffins or all that keto pan. I don't eat that stuff because I don't want that. I don't want any kind of pizza, keto or otherwise. If I do, I will eat the real thing. If I suddenly get a desire for that, I'll, I, I'm not going to try to make an imitation of it. I'm going to go to Domino's or whatever and do it. But I don't want that. I don't want that life. Um, you know, I do look forward to certain holidays and certain vacations and things. You know, there are restaurants I've eaten at literally since I was a little kid, you know, 50 years, you know, and I, when I go home, I, you know, go to those places and that, but then I come back to my real life, you know, it's like, um, and I get that other people can't do that. Trust me. Well, and, and you know, you leave it out of your house, you know, I yeah, think yeah, it's a little yeah, bit yeah. easier, but yeah. for me, like, I'm not even that person that. Like I can look at anything in the world. Like I can look at any food there is and totally just not eat it and be totally fine with it. And I'm not, I'm not just saying that like they'll have cake at work every day, practically yeah. huge cakes in the break room. And I just look at it and I'm like, Ugh, yeah, it, it, it just, it's gross to me. But You're if right. I were to eat a little piece of that cake, I would be in there eating more of that cake. Because it, once I get a taste for it, it's like, it's like a, it's like, you know, a rabid dog in blood or something. <laughs> once you get a taste for it, you can't, you can't stop. Like it's like yeah. the, the Pringles thing, you know, once you pop, you can't stop. Yeah, no, I, I, I can kind of see that. Like I said, because again, I, I don't exactly have, I don't have that. Like I can eat it, but I can't stop, but I definitely have a thing. I just want a little bit. It's like, I, you know, I can't, you know, after a while, I can walk past it a few times, but then I'm like, okay. Like, you know, when my pop red had his 85th birthday, you know, we were out there, I had a little piece of birthday cake. It was probably about a third of the size that I wouldn't would have eaten in my old life. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, it was cool. You know, it was with the family and stuff. It was like a thing. Everybody, you know, I just had a little bit and that was good. I didn't. And I've talked to other people. I remember talking to Connor or Kip about that. He's like, man, if I had a little piece of, Something I'd be dreaming about it, you know. I identify with Kip I heavily. Get I get it. <laughs> See, but that's but here's the funny thing with me, and my, it's literally my brain works the opposite because I am a routine freak and a habit freak. I'm a I'm a you know my routine, my habits, my normals. They're what like drives me. So when I'm eating that cake, I'm literally thinking about bacon and eggs. Oh. Because that's my normal, that's my routine. It's like a, it's like a gravitational pull, you know. And it was, and 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 it was the other way around when I was in the eating the wrong things, and that's why it was so hard and it took so long for me to get to ketogenic living. Because when I was eating the steak and that, I was thinking about pizza because that was my normal. That was, 
you know, those are my routines. Those are my habits, my, you know, my, my whatever. And I had to just continually work on making new normals for myself yeah. and changing little bits at a time till a hundred little changes became a big change. So it's crazy. Like my brain literally works a hundred, uh, 180 degrees for that. When I'm eating, when I'm eating on Thanksgiving day and I'm, I'm thinking about, man, I got to make some steaks when I get home. I got to say, because again, and even like when I'm on vacation, I'm, I'm like, Oh, I'm so glad to be. I, when I got home as I was gone for like four days, I've never in my life been so excited about eating bacon and eggs. I, I just was like, Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Oh, I'm so glad You're to be a carnivore. You're back carnivore. to my routine. It's a, it's about routine. Yeah. You know, it's about my normal. Yeah. I, I'm, I guess I'm, gonna, I'm just odd that way. And it takes a while. I mean, if I ate the wrong things just over and over and over again, just force myself to do it, I will eventually like go back to, okay, this is my normal. This is my routine. This is what I do. I'll tell you a funny story uh, just quick. And then we're getting to the end. Um, Paul will appreciate this. In my hometown of Columbus, Ohio, we have a racetrack, Scioto Downs. And I spent every Saturday night on the benches in the, it's only open from May to September. It's a summer track. I spent every Saturday night on the benches at Souda Downs for probably the better part of 15 years in the same spot, the same place. And one day a friend of mine, uh, I was sitting there and a person tapped me on the shoulder. I turned around. It was a friend of mine I hadn't seen for probably five years. And he said, I told my wife before I left the house, I'm pretty sure I'd find you here. <laughs> All right there. That's me. Um, so now that I've gotten myself on the keto road and I'm doing you know right things and all that, it, it's easy for me to stay in my lane and in my routine because that's just how my mind works. But it took me forever to get there. You know, I'm not a band-aid ripper, and cold turkey is for sandwiches. You know, I mean that's just you know, that's how it works. So but we'll, we're going to wrap up here. We'll let everybody, you know, uh, has anybody got anything to plug, anything they want to talk about? I see a few people popped in. Hey, Robin, good to see you, sis. I saw a thing. I saw Carrie in there. My and Morphosis. Oh. Carrie, love you, sis. Hope you're doing all right. Shout out to Nashville. Um, What's coming up on your channel, Kim? Anything, any videos, anything cool, so, exciting? Just uh, some videos here and there. Like I say, try to make videos that don't suck too bad. <laughs> Oh, but um, every Sunday um, we at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have our um, low carb book club. Um, it's me, Carrie and Lynn, um, midlife carnivore and my metamorphosis with an O. <laughs> and we have a great time. We uh, we started it just basically um, we wanted to learn some more, you know, some more deep stuff about, about the proper human diet. And we are learning and people are learning with us. And, um, yeah, one of my last videos kind of took off and I was like, what it, I thought the vegans had got a hold of it. I, I was kind of <laughs> scared there for a minute, honestly, but yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. Uh, Rick, what you guys think coming up on your channel? Ah, uh, yeah, kind of. All I've been doing lately is just putting in some little short videos just to let people know that I haven't died of a heart attack yet. Yay. I've had some duck rescues. Yeah, you know, duck rescues, van repair videos, and so on. But I've been thinking about making, well, once I can get my computer to cooperate, I've been thinking about making a carnivore lifestyle video because there's more to me than what I eat. You know, I have exactly. my own views. I have my own views on the world. I, I think the world is getting so screwed up between the financial system, the way people live, people I deal with every day. I cannot understand what makes them think. They seem to be running around in circles like a hamster on a wheel. They're not going anywhere. They have all these self-inflicted problems, health issues and everything. So I'm thinking, what can I do? What kind of video could I make? And my most popular video so far is when I was talking about my friend that tried to go on the carnivore diet, but it was too late for him. He ended up kicking the bucket. But mm. I'm just trying to come up with some of the ideas that I have in my life, the reason why I live the way that I do. And even though I'm a poor man, I'm able to survive pretty well. I mean, I've been able to adapt.
but a lot of people I know, one little thing is all it takes to turn their life upside down. And then they go into some kind of breakdown mode. And sometimes that involves eating a lot of junk food. I got one friend of mine, he's got diabetes now. And I keep thinking, how can I get through to him? I keep telling him, ditch the soda, stop eating the duck food. But he keeps telling me, I can't eat what you do. Your food is too bland. You know, you're sitting there chewing on a piece of meat. You don't even spice it up. So well, if that's what you want, add some spices to it. Put some onions and garlic and pepper and whatever else you want. If it comes, if it's a whole food, it comes from a plant and it tastes good, throw it on there. <clears throat> whatever it takes for you to get that steak down. And ditch those stupid tackies and, I don't know, this other crap. <clears throat> they eat so many stupid things. And they go to Chick-fil-A and Pollo Tropical. I said, don't, don't do that, you know. And then I thought about maybe what I need to do is offer my own line of cooking products. Rick's engine cooking set and maybe Rick's tailgate grill that doesn't cost yeah. 500 bucks. <laughs> Hey, listen, your cooking your cooking set will just have two things: heat and lard. That's <laughs> gonna, that's, that's gonna be set. Whatever, yeah, drop but, it in the grease, family. That's, that's oh, that could be your that be your channel. Drop it in the grease with charger. I've, over. <laughs> I've made my own cooking utensils for the engine. I used yeah. a pressure washer and sheet metal, and they're they're made out of stainless steel. Some of them are copper. I've had made several different versions. And, you know, you basically just build a mold out of wood and you put some stainless steel in there, clamp it together, pump it with a pressure washer. It expands, mm -hmm. weld the edges, and then you can make you make a hinge on it. I put it on the engine. I've cooked so many steaks and so much meat. I've never cooked iguana on the engine. Maybe one day I'll do that. But I've deep fried on the engine. I've had heart attack chicken cooked on a 7.3 diesel and a 440 <laughs> Dodge. And they all tasted good. And it's so good because when you're driving, you smell that delicious food cooking, you know. Oh and it's like, you know, you know how the fast food places, they try to entice people with the fast food smell, the same smell that makes me want to throw up. Well, in my car or my truck, and I'm cooking that steak or that heart attack chicken, and I'm smelling it. And as the miles go by, you can smell it cooking more and more. And just when it's ready, you got to pull off the road and open it up and start eating. Because that's that's the way I do it. While my friends are at the Chick-fil-A drive through I'm on the side of the road, you know, eating up my heart attack food. So, Rick, I have an idea. I think you should just film your normal everyday life. I think it'll be fascinating. <laughs> yeah, you need a plug. Yeah, that's, you, yeah, that's can't miss. That is can't miss YouTube until they ban it. <laughs> well, Paul, listen, uh, hey, Paul, you know, Paul doesn't have a channel, but I have a feeling there may be some upcoming uh, uh things there and you got to come back here uh when you uh when you launch that thing and then debut it here and and we'll of course you know you're part of the family we'll make sure we give you all the love you need thank you brother thanks well, for having me hi man and yeah. listen we appreciate you appreciate the support appreciate you in the chat and all that stuff you're welcome here anytime uh, we have uh, 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 actually exceeded our contractual obligations uh, to the family this week <laughs> Want to thank my my man Paul Rick, my ride or die nurse Kim. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me, and all of you guys. I appreciate you so much uh, for hanging out with us. We will be back next Tuesday with more ridiculousness, tomfoolery, and shenanigans. And <laughs> so, <laughs> we and will see. You. <laughs> yeah, we will see you guys next Tuesday. Take care of yourself. We'll catch you on the Bye, next. Bye, guys. Have a good <laughs> week.